Hello, my name is Mike Swanson. You're listening uh, to the Wall Street Window podcast. It's up on YouTube. And the odds are you're watching this because you got an email from me uh, telling you it's up by being on my email list. If you're not on it, click the link associated with this video and get on it because uh, there's a lot of things happening in the markets today. Uh, some giant moves have actually just taken place this week. And I got David Skarika uh, of addictedtoprofits.net to share with us his insights on what's going on. How are you doing today, Dave? Yeah, sorry, I'm just moving my laptop around so I can get my, uh, my uh, I, got, I got half, I got the two profits in the background. Um, but anyhow, no, I'm doing, um, I'm doing pretty good. Um, uh, you know, the markets, the gold has been turning up. Um, yeah, that's better. Uh, so yeah, the market is turning up and things are going well and, uh, I mean, for us, because the gold market is turning up and um, uh, we've had some, both of us have had a little, a uh, few investments kind of uh, do uh, a bounce here and rally. And uh, it looks like we may be topping on the stock markets, even though we have an update today. Uh, we had a big tank in, in crypto, um, you know, and, um, and uh, yeah, so it is kind of interesting. I don't know if we're at some kind of inflection report, or a point where maybe, gold and precious metals start to outperform other assets because they did underperform a little bit, you know, in the last, um, you know, uh, 10 months, but it does look like they're beginning to outperform. And if you look at gold <coughs> compared to the S and P or compared to crypto in the past, you know, month or two, they have outperformed. Yeah. And they, they've been outperforming, um, since April, I'm going to pull up a little chart and then I want to pull up a chart of, of this Bitcoin thing. Uh, but I did the, this, this charts um, that I'm pulling up here. This is from the 18th. This is a, a blog post I made, but we got the price of gold right here, made a double bottom in March and shot up. Um, it's still trading around 1850, 1880 or so. But as gold went up, uh, Bitcoin rolled over. Um, uh, the NASDAQ also has been falling a bit. Treasury bonds been trending down really since August. And so is the U.S. dollar. So in, in one sense, since the end of April, uh, gold has actually been uh, the best performing thing in the markets, along with, along with silver for that matter. There's, there's actually one thing I'd like to say, because, you know, you and I aren't huge Bitcoin bulls or anything. I have a couple small um, fintech crypto investments. One's done very well, but... Like, um, but what I want to point out is when you look at that QQQ chart and that BTC chart, it, to me, it looks like the NASDAQ is essentially tracking a very close correlation, you know, with Bitcoin, especially since late last year when Bitcoin began to take off, say, in December. And that's what I've always said that I, I know a lot of the crypto people will get mad at me. But I don't believe that crypto is an alternative currency or a store of value or whatever you want to call it. I believe that is an extension of the stock market, equity market, tech bubble. And, you know, if you go look at 2018, when stocks fell about 20 percent, Bitcoin fell like 70 percent. Right. After a huge after they both had huge moves in 2017. So we've never really because Bitcoin only started trading around 09, 2010. We've never seen it in a real multi-year bear market. And, you know, and if this is like the other uh, bubbles, like in 2000 or 2007, the NASDAQ is going to fall 50% at least. And I would like to see how Bitcoin reacts when the NASDAQ falls 50%. And I don't think it's going to be some kind of hedge. I think I'm willing to bet if the NASDAQ falls 50, Bitcoin falls 70 or 80. And, um, you know, and I would just say that the short history Bitcoin's had, it's kind of, that's kind of on my side. Because the only significant declines, uh, the decline we saw, you know, was in 2018 when Bitcoin fell more than the market. And what was interesting about 2018 is gold rally, especially late in that fourth quarter that year, when the Nasdaq and, and the, the market rolled over, whereas, you know, Bitcoin the whole year kind, kind of fell. And there's another interesting note that even if the markets were to stabilize a bit here and go up a bit. After the initial bust in crypto in 2018, they didn't really trade with the rest of the market for the rest of that year. Um, you, you know, uh, they kind of they had a big 
50% decline, just like they just had here recently. And then they kind of churned for a few months into the spring and summer. And then they rolled over again uh, late in the year. And, and what you re if you remember then is that the markets were actually still making highs in September of October of 2018. So there was even a disconnect there once kind of it broke. Yeah, well, and if you go look at that chart that you're putting up to with Bitcoin, is there was a lot of support in the 45,000 area. That was essentially the lows of April and the lows of February. And, and essentially we, we broke through that kind of topping formation and there's a potential head and shoulders top with the April highs uh, and then uh, the March and the May highs kind of being the, the, um, uh, the shoulders. Well, one thing about it, you know, the NASDAQ has pulled back about 10% from its recent high. And during that pullback in, in the NASDAQ or, or the triple Qs, as you can see here, Bitcoin essentially fell 50% from its high, you know, when it yeah. fell to 30,000 yesterday. So a 10% decline, decline in the NASDAQ means a 50, uh, already a 50% decline in the collectible uh, uh, virtual currency of, of Bitcoin. Well, and, let, so I don't mean to interrupt you, like that goes back to my point. Let's say the NASDAQ falls 50 right? Well, that means, let's say in another 20%, Bitcoin, I don't know, goes to 20,000, right? And then, and then when it falls another 10%, so you, if you're having Bitcoin every time the NASDAQ falls 10 or 20%, the NASDAQ, say, falls in half in a bear market, you're talking, I, I think, like an 80% decline in, in Bitcoin, probably. So you're talking 10 to 15,000. Now, I think one thing that's dangerous about it is because what Bitcoin did after 2018, when it fell 70 or 80 percent, and then it went to these new all-time highs, craziest chart I've ever seen is Ethereum, which went from 15, um, you know, 100 to like under 100 dollars, and then went to 4,000 on this run. I think because they had such huge percentage declines in 2018, 2019, and then went to these new all-time highs. A lot of people think that's going to happen again, but if if I'm kind of correct that this is more of a secular top in stocks like 2000 was rather than just a short term top like 2018. Then what you're going to see is, you know, it's like the dot com. It's like, OK, your crypto will probably have some kind of small place in asset allocation going forward. But if you go look at like the dot coms, like Amazon didn't really go past its 2000 high you know, significantly and, and keep above it until something like 2012 or 2013. You're talking 12 or 13 years. So that's what people don't realize when you kind of see these secular moves and secular highs. Well, the, you know, most people are still, you know, that are involved in, in, in this are still bullish. Uh, where I live, um, you know, I know many people who open up Robinhood accounts for the very first time and statistics show that's what happened uh, since uh, March of last year. And there's an article it said from Coinbase, a crypto promotion website, or, or you know, or, or that says, or not Coinbase, but one of these news websites for crypto that says that at the end of last year, there's 1.7 million people on Robinhood who own, owned it. And as of uh, the end of April, there are over 9 million. So that's the number of individual investors who piled in uh, on this recent run. And where I live, I've seen people, you know, talk about it. Uh, and they're doubling or they're saying they're buying more uh, this week as it has dropped. None of them are saying they're selling. And the thing is, there's a, most of the people on crypto uh, that are the leaders of it or, or uh, you know, gurus or whatever they're still saying the same stuff, how it's going to be the future. This is just a little blip. It's volatile. You just got to, you know, hold, huddle, H-L-L-D or however you say it, huddle, huddle. H-O-D-L, yeah. Yeah, and it's just, they keep, they're saying the same stuff they've always been saying. But the thing about it is you made the comment that uh, crypto has been trading with the NASDAQ. And they don't say that. They make out like this is a safe haven. This is going to go up 
when the market goes down, it's going to go up because the because you because there's going to be inflation or dollars going to go down. When in reality, uh, the, the the statistics and the charts they show that you're the one that's right on this, and not these Bitcoin crypto gurus. This chart here uh, has the correlation indicator that measures the relationship of Bitcoin with the NASDAQ and below that with the US dollar. When this, it, it's simply measuring how they trade together or opposite one another. Uh, and it's a 200 day moving average. So it's not just, you know, what's happened in 90 days or something. This is a long term indicator and it's consistent ever since the creation of crypto. And what it shows is it's the correlation of 0 0.88, which is about as close as to one as you can get when you measure these things. And with the US dollar, it's it's close to uh, 0 0.54, which is- No, it's negative 0 0.54. So it means, yeah. that, that means there's a negative correlation that actually yeah. crypto is, well, which would actually make some sense. That means, it means it's going up when the dollar is going down. So like negative one, I mean, there's exactly the opposite. So that means there is a little bit of a negative correlation to the US dollar. Like it's going up a little bit of a hedge, but 0.54 is not that high of a negative correlation. Yeah, it's, it's not high. And, and, it's, yeah. and if you look at this historic, I'll just show you a, a really long term chart. Well, it's really, really long term is 10 years because you know, crypto is yeah, eight. So this a this only goes back eight. It's more consistent with the Nasdaq. Yeah, yeah. Than with the U.S. dollar index. Yeah, yeah, you and yeah. You can see it. other than like the, these, and the reason, by the way, these negative correlations to the Nasdaq happened in 2018 and 29 and early 2020 was that it was going down way more than the Nasdaq. Yeah, the exactly. Not, exactly. That, it's not a negative cor correlation like crypto was going way up. That's that's why there was that correlation. That's so, right. but but the biggest I think the biggest interesting ones is go again. Look at 2017. Look at uh, look at 2020 over the second half of the year, when the Nasdaq entered these really frothy periods of of almost parabolic type type action. And so did crypto. That's when the correlation is the highest. So that, again, that tells us that the correlation in crypto is the highest when the market is the frothiest. So that's why I keep saying it's just an offshoot of the bubble. And then let's look at something real simple here. You know, we've talked about uh, people are like, talking about Elon Musk, you know, his Dogecoin. He's tweeted some negative things about crypto. But I want to talk about Elon Musk because Tesla is kind of the poster boy stock for the bubble, right? And, and the thing about Tesla is, is I always tell people, do you think the same kind of people that say buy a gold coin or a silver coin? or uh, a gold or silver company, right? Um, do you think the same kind of investors, like us who do that, um, are the same people that are in, in crypto or in Tesla, or the same people that buy crypto or the same kind of investors that are in Tesla? I think it's the latter. I think yeah. the type of people who are attracted to volatility, um, you know, potentially huge gains, this sort of thing, they're, they're investing, they're, if, if, they're going to invest in two of those three things. They're going to invest in crypto and Tesla, not in precious metals. So what I'm trying to say is, so when that stuff all goes up and down, if they get margin calls or panic and sell, they're going to be selling in their Tesla or their tech stocks at the same time they're selling their crypto, et cetera. So that's, that, that's all I'm trying to say by that too. And same thing, like you know, when Tesla got really frothy last year and now it's sold off, well, you know, it's just, you know Tesla's, off way more from its highs in percentage terms in the NASDAQ, just like um, 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 crypto is. Yeah, for sure. And uh, it's just a, uh, it's just a wild time, but I, but when I look, what, you know, this crypto chart um, or Bitcoin chart, I mean, to me, yeah, I don't know why these people are buying it because this just looks like a completely broken thing it may hold up here. And we've made mistakes in the past too. Obviously, everyone yeah. makes their mistakes in investing. Sure. And the one thing I've got to say is this reminds me of one mistake I remember and I'll admit that what we both made is that in 2012, the gold stocks both, they started to, they had this topping formation in 12 and 11. 
And they broke, I think, in late 2012, that kind of topping present, uh, formation. But they didn't break it in a dramatic fashion. And they kind of rallied and they went back to like the former support level. Me and you were still bullish in gold stocks. And then everything kind of rolled over in 2013. And then these crypto people are doing the same. You can see, forget what your feelings on crypto are. If you like it, you hate it. That is a big topping formation that the, the support of 45,000 was gone. So maybe it can, it can um, um, and it was 45 to 47. So maybe it can rally back to 45, 47. And then and then roll over again. But the, the, like, if you just looked at as a chart, you would say that's a top. The you know the it's a head and shoulders. The resistance, or sorry, the support is now gone, and that's it. And then there's all these other things. Like everyone I talk to has some kind of crypto coin, and some of them are ridiculous. Like I've had people show me coins for saving the whales and all kinds of crap. Like there's nothing. You know, there's one that it's got a, a, set, a couple of like sexual connotations. Um, and it's just like, it's ridiculous. To me, it's a ridiculous tulip kind of mania or, or, or a bubble. And then one of the funniest things is that on May 10th, that jackass Tom Brady put a picture of himself, like with those glowing eyes, which is like these crypto people do it to show uh, bull bullish. And I don't care. I know he's a good football player. Some of you may like him. I can't stand that fucking guy myself. Excuse my language. And um, anyhow, but what was funny is that he basically picked the top. That that right shoulder, the head and shoulders, was on May the 10th was the top. So he essentially picked the top. You should stick to throwing a football. But anyhow, um, uh, but, but there's all kinds of things like that. Like I think Trevor Lawrence, who was the first overall pick in the NFL draft, he wanted some of his, <laughs> that's what I'm laughing at. <laughs> you know, he wanted some of his signing bonus paid in crypto. So it's like all these signs that like, you know, like we talk about shoeshine boys, little manias, they're all kind of there. You know, like what is this guy, why does this guy even care about crypto? He's worth tens of millions of dollars, right? You know, it's just, it's like a, a lot of non, uh, a nonsense. And I think it's also kind of like, you know, people, you, you talk about, you know, I used to be really interested in, you know, social themes that go with the stock market. Like, remember they used to have the, uh, the indicator that like the length of women's skirts, like in the 20s, it was short. It's a bull market. In the 30s, it was long. And, you know, when, when basically when people were less conservative, you'd be in a bull market, you know, vice versa, et cetera. And I think that like one of the, one of the things socially that's going on now with all the social media is TikTok, Instagram, everyone has these kind of, short attention spans is, you know, it's 30 second videos, 15 second videos, just a quick picture or something, you know, and no one's doing anything in depth. You know, you know, um, kids today don't watch, you know, the Godfather because three hours is too long. You know, you know, they watch 15 second TikTok video and, um, and, and these coins, there's nothing behind them. It's not studying a balance sheet. It's not doing when we, when we get clients for our mining deals, looking at the properties, looking at the management, et cetera. It's, it's just like, oh, this coin does something. And, and then you look at the valuations of the coins. It's like, what's the price to earnings? What's the price to sales? What's the, and there is none of that. And then they'll, they'll always poop out, poop with that by saying, oh, this is a different thing. You don't understand it. You know? You know? Well, one thing about it is I've had people that I know that wanted, that got into this for the first time, they said, and I still hear this, you know, you still see this from the crypto leaders are saying this, that, oh, may, you know, it's just going to be, it's going to go up because more people are going to get in it. And that's what's going to make it go up. More people are going to get in it. And the, some of the people I've seen say like, okay, maybe it is hot air and, and stuff, but you know, I just want to get in before others get in. That's how I want to get rich. Well, here we, this, this is the article I was talking about. 9.5 million customers got in it uh, in the first quarter. This is on Robinhood. Well, there's 13 million Robinhood customers. So there's only 4 million potentially left, you know, to buy it. That's yeah, yeah. Kind of silly, you know, as a, as, a, as a reason. And the thing is, I don't know if I've shown this to you, I've talked about this in another video, but this is a Robinhood account I have. Yeah. And this is what you see when you log in and there's absolutely no information. You can't do stock screens. You get more information from Yahoo finance. Like if you're trying to find stocks, there's nothing. I've, I've never used Robinhood. So I'm laughing because it's just, 
it, there's just, it's so nothing like what you get. It's ridiculous. But this is yeah. what, this is what you get. If you want to decide on what to buy, you know, you see your account. Well, you can see that you've made a percent today. That's good. Yeah, that's exciting. Oh. <laughs> 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 that's because my mining stocks are up, you know. Yeah, yeah. Flipping stocks, PAS yeah. is up. Uh, but anyway, uh, so how do you decide what you might want to buy? Well, they have these lists, trending lists. This is the only thing. And, and they are, they're in the top lists are crypto, altcoins, you know, daily movers, Bitcoin family. So oh, Ethereum family. They're literally guiding people into these crypto collectibles. You yeah, know? well, look at like right. energy, pharma tech. That's all on the bottom line. On the bottom, right? Where the yeah. top, top two lines are all like, yeah, altcoins, crypto, Bitcoin, or cannabis, which is super, you know, um, which is, is super, super uh, speculative sector as well, right? So it's, it's, that's just kind of funny, you know? And then when you do click one of these lists. You, you know what this reminds me of is I used to, um, my, my uncle had a, a portfolio tracker back in the late 90s when I was getting started called Trader's Edge. Yeah. And it was a thing where you would punch in your own stocks. Then you would connect, you know, back then we were on our phone line connections on the internet and it would just update the price every day because you would put in how much you own, you know, it's up and, and it just, it was very simple like that because it was like, you know, this was 1998, you know, and that's what this looks like almost. Like, and, and there would be no news releases, none of the financials or any information on anything. That's exactly what this is. All you see here is if it's up or down in the market cap, you know, yeah, and obviously the ticker. This is their yeah. top 100 list of the most owned stocks. You know, Tesla's number one. and you know, AMC, which is a meme stock. Yeah, you know? number one. Not, I just went down them. There's not a... You know, if you if if the idea of getting in these getting in something before anyone else is in is the way to make money, uh, there isn't a single gold or silver stock or ETF on this entire list. Yeah. Like Fubo TVs, there. That's a yeah. online streaming service, and the stock is tanked. You know, so it's okay. You know, yeah. That one. I'm, I'm, yeah, there's a perfect I'm, example. That was like one of these stocks. Like, if you can get like a five year chart or a year chart, you'll see it. That's that's one of these stocks that. You know, yeah. So went up a lot, and they tanked on earnings. You know, when I when I click that, here's yeah. the, what you see. You see the chart. It's a one day chart. Yeah, about you can you get it one or five year if you want. Yeah, it tells you the market cap. Doesn't tell you the PE. Doesn't tell you the dividend. Just the market cap, <laughs> two point seven billion. And well, they probably don't have a DV, a PD or dividend. Uh, <laughs> but then it tells you the analyst ratings. So well, they're saying to buy. Yeah, so I guess that's what convinces people to buy these stocks. <laughs> oh, like it. I'm going to pile in. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, uh, living offshore, I don't have cable. I stream everything. So I used to use their service. Um, what happens, though, is I have to use like VPNs, right? And all of a sudden, they started detecting my VPN, so I started using another service. I'm not going to say which one because I don't want them to start using that the detecting, too. But it's just like the other service I use is like exactly the same. Like these things... Like, and, and um, like AT&T has its own streaming service. Like if you cut the cord at AT&T, you could just stream the AT&T.TV service, right? So all of these things are very similar and the same almost too. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, and that's the kind of stocks people are like, you know, chasing or whatever. So, you know. So then when I load up Tesla, it's up today, right? But it says market cap 571 billion. PE ratio 563. That's pretty, pretty wild. PE of 563. Yeah, it's well, supposedly when it got put in the S&P 500, that's when the stock was at its height and the E was a little lower because that was before they had that big quarter, last quarter, which was somewhat actually influenced by the fact that they bought, you know, Bitcoin and they had a paper gain, you know, in, in the Bitcoin holdings. But, but, um, when it had over a thousand PDE when it entered and its market cap was huge, it's, I think it increased the PDE on the S&P by two or three points just itself because it had such a huge weighting and it had, you know, it's a huge weighted stock with a huge PDE, right? So I think the S&P PDE like jumped by two points overnight just when Tesla got put in, wow. you know? Yeah. Well, so, you know, I don't know. What, what do you think people should do, you know, in the market? Look, 
I, I have a stock and I've talked about it on my newsletter. So the disclosure is, you know, I do own it. I bought it in a private placement called uh, Lynx, L-Y-N-X. They've actually just taken over a bank in, uh, in Asia as well because they're doing more fintech. They do a little bit of crypto, um, but they do uh, more. But basically, they're trying to use the blockchain technology to, you know, in the banking system to use for money transfers and help out with financial services, et cetera. And I think actually there is a future in that because there are some, you know, there, that, that, that technology is very conducive in that industry. But anyhow, so like I bought that in a 10 cent financing and then the stock ran to 40. I reckon I, we talked about it in the newsletter at 40. It's now like a buck 50. So this has done phenomenal for me, right? To the point where it's one of my biggest holdings because it's just run up so much, even though I didn't buy a huge amount of it. So look at, and I, and I, I did it because I said, well, you know what? The market keeps going up and crypto keeps going up. This could do well. And it looks like a nice little company. So what I'm trying to say is there's a place for these little things if you're interested in it. But what happens with these Bitcoin people and the reason Mike and I, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm sure you'll agree with me. I can't stand a lot of these crypto people is that everything is crypto. If you don't totally 100% agree to it and, and become part of the cult, you're a jackass. They think you're an idiot, this and that. And um, you just get sick of this kind of like behavior. But anyhow, what I'm trying to say is what do you do is, yeah, if you still like coins, fine. You know, maybe they're on sale. You can have a little. But to me, it's a fringe investment. You don't put any more than a couple percent of your money in it. And it looks like gold and silver are now coming out of this base. And they're starting to lead. Um, I think what we're seeing too is that the economic recovery is not as strong as what people were hoping uh, as COVID kind of uh, uh, goes away and ends. And um, we're going to continue to see money printing and huge deficits. And actually the, 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 the bubble kind of ending in these stocks, um, or it's, uh, uh, so sorry, the bubble, the, the so COVID ending kind of could end the bubble in these stocks as well. So, yeah, I mean, mining stocks are doing good. Uh, it, it, it's just what they're doing. I mean, uh, I'm going to just load up one. Yeah, like the GDX is uh, basically at a high year to date, you know? Well, I mean, Newmont's at a high, basically. Yeah, but Newmont's, at, yeah, at a new high. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and if you just look at that chart of Newmont, yeah, from the August to, say, March low, August high to March low, that's a beautiful, just kind of nice basing formation and, and then we started, you started breaking the resistance just a few weeks ago, around 65, 67, and now you're breaking up to new highs, you know? And of course, when the big cap mining stocks go up, the small, the right, the best smaller ones tend to go up even more. Yeah, if you go look at, um, I don't know, if you want to put up XTG, this is a nice little producer. This is the stock Mike and I, uh, is our kind of our client for the month. And yeah, same kind of thing, you know, it's gone from about a dollar to a buck 20 in the last few weeks. And, it, you know, same thing. It looks like after this kind of, you know, you know space has gone sideways since peaking last September, you know, if it goes through a buck 50, it'll probably have another significant move higher. And what's great about this stock, one of the issues with the junior stocks is dilution. This stock, this company hasn't printed a share in 10 years, you know? So you, know, you see the GDX just kind of looks like it's behind Newmont or the, you know, yeah. you know or GDXJ, yeah, like, they just look like Newmont's kind of leading and same thing. They're getting near their support or sorry, the resistance levels. And probably at some point in the next couple of months, they're going to take out those August highs. Right. Well, I don't want to keep you too much longer. So um, I'll just, uh, if you got yeah, any, I've got to take off. So yeah, if you, if you uh, have anything else you think we should say or last minute thoughts or. No, no, actually on top of that, like saying gold, gold and silver shares. I know Mike owns some emerging markets you know, own some energy. Uh, we also have some hedges, some shorts. So again, it's kind of like about, it's because this is just boring now. No one, everyone wants to make a thousand to one on the next coin. No one cares about diversification. You know, look at REITs, you know, real estate is back to the, the REITs are back to the pre-2020 eyes and real estate, owning a house, like real estate prices. I, I know here in the little island I'm on because people are looking to get out of cities and you know, get out of uh, highly densely populated areas because everything's happened because of COVID. Um, you know, the real estate here is boom. My house is now worth much more than what I paid for it 10 years ago. And I know, uh, so like real estate, you know, um, gold and precious metals, resources, agriculture, you know, a little bit of crypto, you know, also hedge positions. 
it's kind of really about using diversification. You know, base metals is done like copper is done better than gold, right? You know, so it, it's really about diversification, but no one wants to hear that because when you say um, diversification, that just sounds boring. You know? <laughs> you know? Well, I think there's just all these new people that got very small amounts of money. They opened up Robinhood accounts and they're trying to get rich quick. You know? Quick, yeah. So, and and but I, like, like the last thing I'd like to say yeah, about yeah, that yeah. is, that this is so extreme because when Mike and I started in the late nineties, you know, people were trying to get rich quick then, but quick back then meant like, say someone had 5,000 or something to start with, or a couple thousand. It was like, they'd want to double their money every six months or something like that. Now people want to find these coins that go up you know, with a hundred dollars to, you know, a thousand or 10,000 and they want to do it in two months and they want to do that every two months, you know? Yeah, which is not reality. Is no, that's, that's fantasy. Yeah, as we're now, now seeing. But and I think actually that's the last thing we should end on because Mike actually is the one who mentioned this to me and I, I, I looked it up and confirmed it. One, another danger in the crypto world is that there's not like Coinbase or the big exchanges, but like the, the, these, there's these smaller kind of like over-the-counter crypto exchanges like we, and a lot of them are off, offshore uh, you know, um, that are very unregulated and and people on those are like buying these things on 10 to 1 leverage and stuff like that it's like you got something like bitcoin that's you know can drop 50 percent in three weeks and then go up 50 percent in a day um and you're on 10 to 1 margin is completely insane well you know? i actually found out today why they're le they're letting people do that they're actually going on even bigger margin like a hundred to one, sometimes even a thousand to one margin, which is, it sounds totally insane. But the way they're doing it is they're saying that these exchanges are saying that these are that Bitcoin and these cryptos are currency. So just like oh, so they're doing forex. Yeah, they're doing forex as as Bitcoin. That's what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and just so you know, the reason you can do forex in a hundred to one or one hundred to fifty to one, how many currencies move two percent in a day? Not very many, right? Yeah. So it's like you can do four x on ten to one because if if a currency goes up two percent on ten to one, you made twenty, and if it goes down two percent, you've lost twenty. So you can you can you can handle that, right? Yeah. But the problem is if you're on, you know, ten to one and it goes up ten percent or down ten percent, you're wiped out. If it goes down, you know, thirty percent, you've lost three times what you got in. Mm. You know. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to me and everyone else and anyone listening. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel to get the next video and then go to Dave's website and subscribe there, addicted to uh, net. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you. That's good, man.